again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And we've got this new layout going on here. So um, we're trying to get a little bit more tech savvy, which, you know, you would think since we both live in households <laughs> with tech that this would be easy. But um, we're doing the Facebook Live thing while we tape. We're doing Facebook Live, which is already confusing. And then because we used to sit on the L and I would sit over yeah, there, and now I'm all yeah. like, oh no, I can see myself well, twice. And, it's and it awful. just was always a weird <laughs> distortion. And just to make things more complicated for those of you who don't know, Facebook Live is using your phone app. Um, it won't let us do it this way. It'll only let it do us this way. So we're going to try to do this. I don't know. I don't know. It is what it is. It'll be weird, but we're here. That's Both right. of us are on screen. Right. We think you can see us. And uh, welcome to another edition of Match Talk. Yes. Um, so it, <laughs> I'm very involved pol politically, obviously. But all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, my God, there's an election coming. I mean, now it's, we're in that within that 30-day window. And all of a sudden, it seems like it's all moving quite quickly. Um, yesterday, uh, the city clerk's office started mailing absentee ballots oh wow um so for for those of you who vote absentee or maybe for those of you who haven't voted absentee but you'd like to you can fi um file um a request for an absentee ballot and they'll mail one to you um and then you fill it out and you sign it and you bring it back mail it back or you can bring it down to city hall and then your vote will be counted that way um what draw this to my attention was last night somebody asked me about the questions on the ballot so i was like what questions on the ballot because i really wasn't paying like the oh, i hadn't wow, really thought about so on the back of your ballot you'll have the front side which will be your normal candidate fill in the dot thing on the back side of your ballot this year there are three um charter questions or three questions oh, i wow. shouldn't say they're all charter um one's a charter commission question one is non-binding and one is just a question <laughs> So I don't know if the what second are the one, questions? I don't know, maybe one of them isn't binding. Um, question one, and I did, I went, um, I spoke to the city clerk's office just to clarify that I, what I thought was the case is the case. And question one on the ballot says, shall the city of Manchester approve the amendment of the city charter as follows? Amend the city charter in accordance with the provisions of an, you know, an RSA by repealing in its entirety section 5.33, which establishes the city ward lines and replacing with the new section 5.33, which provides as follows. Okay, so they're trying to move yes. the ward lines nope. of the city? No. Nope. Actually, section 5.33 currently spells out the ward lines in the city. We are the only municipality left in the state of New Hampshire that has this spelled out in our charter. Okay, so they just want to remove They want that. to change it mm -hmm. to say, ward lines shall divide the city into 12 wards of equal population as is practicable. practicable. To achieve that goal upon issuance of the federal census and every 10 years thereafter, or as may be necessary to conduct fair elections under New Hampshire's constitution, the board of mayor and aldermen shall initiate review of the city's ward lines to determine if ward redistricting is necessary. If the board of mayor and aldermen determines that ward redistricting is necessary, the board shall propose changes to ward lines through ordinance enactment and or revision to create wards of equal population as is practicable. Dis redistricting occur occurring within the 10 year period shall only be for the purpose of relocating a polling location within a ward's boundaries and shall not move any voters. A public <laughs> hearing on the proposed ward boundaries shall be held before its adoption. So here's the, here's the, the impetus for this. Ward six, um, Besides, have a polling the, station, besides the fact right? that we're the only municipality who still spells out in our charter, literally spells out what streets make up the ward. So anytime you would want to change the ward lines for whatever reason, you would actually have to have a, a public election like this. You'd have to have a city election, which means if you did it in non-city election years, you'd have to pay for an extra ballot to be printed just to move a ward line. And at first I was like, well, we don't want people moving ward lines willy-nilly. We don't want necessarily just the mayor and the alderman moving well, ward lines willy-nilly. Well, but there would, there would have to be a, a public, it, there would have to be the whole, you know, public participation and hearings and all this there stuff. There would be one hearing and then they would change the ordinance. But I don't trust this. I Well, it's <laughs> not that I don't trust it, but I do understand why this happens. So in Ward 6, they used to vote at St. Pius Church. And then St. Pius Church decided they didn't want to do it anymore. 
And there's certain requirements for polling locations. I'm sure it has to have adequate parking and it has to have, you know, ADA compliant and there has to be all these different things. There literally is no place in Ward 6 that can be a polling location. So what do they do? Well, I know what they do. Right now, people in Ward 6 actually are voting in Ward 8. Okay, but which this is, is... Which is part of the fair, I'm sure, um, the fair elections. The, the, the laws that dictate fair elections probably say you should be voting in your own district. In other words, they can't make people in Ward 10 vote in Ward 3 just because. But unfortunately... See, but this isn't saying anything about the polling. This is saying if the population in the ward Well, but that's change, how it changes right? now. If, if Right now, we recently, I would say in the last, you know, in the last decade, in the, probably the last six years, um, West Manchester's ward lines changed. Ward 10 used to have half of Granite Street, and then the other half was Ward 11. And I forget where the Ward 11 to Ward 12 broke. But because there was so much development up in Ward 12... Their number increased, so they had to give part of Ward 12 to Ward 11, and then okay. they gave part of Ward 11 to Ward 10. So now Ward 10 goes up to Douglas Street. You know, it creeps up because there's more people in Ward 12. Now, I do like that it says um, redistricting occurring within the 10-year period. So right now, every 10 years, they can re redraw the lines anyways. Right. Right now, this new... Um, charter amendment would say redistricting within that 10 year shall only be for the purpose of relocating a polling location within wards boundaries so if you know i don't know if Parker the same Bernie, scenario yeah. that just happened, happened. and I, I did talk to the city clerk and i remember him telling me about this before and he said he will have a long lengthy explanation at the polling places but this actually is a good thing um I, I, there's always that, you know, mm. the spidey sense that we both do. We both have that spidey sense. So what are they trying to do? Well, they aren't trying to do anything. The city clerk's trying to rectify a problem that they can't fix readily. Um, because in order to change the city's charter, you have to have a municipal election. And we both know that most people don't really vote and put, yeah. So there is, yeah. so I, I honestly do believe that this should be a yes, um, and then every time it comes up to change the ordinance, people should get involved. So that yeah, means you, and me, I mean, and 12, that's also, you and me and 12 other people will be participating. Right. So that's fine. So it's like, eh, we're going to have to pay so attention. That was question one. <laughs> question two, which this one doesn't say it's binding, not binding. It doesn't say it's changing the charter. It says, shall the city of Manchester allow the operation of sports, book, retail locations within the city of Manchester. So that's for the gambling, Well, right? it's funny because I think it's gambling? supposed to be, yeah, it's like I think a weird sports book is supposed training. to be one word, but I was like, nobody's going to even know what sports book retail locations are. Um, I'll vote yes on this. I have no, re I have no problem with um, expanding opportunities for businesses um, in Manchester. I um, Did you see what the new budget that was passed, um, you know, and I, it's a compromise budget yeah. for both sides, yeah. right? It seems like no one's Nobody's particularly happy. happy, so that is probably a good sign. But um, that they have now funded, fully funded kindergarten, kindergarten without Kino. But without Kino, yeah. so, and I find that troubling, right? Well, because and I do too, I, especially since um, I think kindergarten funding was dependent on Kino revenue. Yes. Right? And I was so, never, so it I seems like a weird... was never an advocate for, um, for pu publicly funded half-day kindergarten. I just never did. I loved it with the way it was in New Hampshire where we had private kindergartens and people could choose to send their kids to kindergarten, not to send their kids in ki kindergarten. Um, but we did that, change that years ago, and now we switch to full-day funding, which just means that people in, you know... Berlin are funding Manchester's kindergarten programs. I just would rather see cities and towns fund their own, but okay. Um, but they did base it on Kino revenue. And then, yes, in this budget, now it says Kino revenue goes into the general, mm -hmm. or actually, I think it goes into the education fund. Oh, in general. I think. Okay, I wasn't sure. But it doesn't go specifically to kindergarten. So that was kind of sneaky. I don't like the whole, but I hate the way we do. Um, 
things the budget. in the budget. I wish the budget was just about money and sp- but the. Would I mean, I was shocked because I I guess I was under the very naive impression that uh, we in New Hampshire, because we like to do things uniquely, did not allow people to just tag well, all but, kinds of but nonsense the argument, onto right, the well, budget. But, I agree with you. I think that that doesn't seem like a relevant thing. But th- then I'm sure people on uh, that are that were involved would argue, well, but it does because it involves funding from the state to the cities. So it is part of the budget. I think people, I think a lot happens in the budget that nobody ever really puts their finger on until they're like, wait a minute, what happened? Well, well, here's one thing that uh, really struck me this week is I remember back, um, I think it was when Bill O'Brien was mm-hmm. still in the house and they cut the budget yeah, significantly, right? Like With huge. the rainy days we, funds yes. and, you know, there were and $800 we million dollars in yep. unfunded liabilities. We can't run our households like nope. that. So why would we run our state like that? And um, they... Uh, so that was about, I think it was $11 billion back then, right? Yeah. And our budget is now up to $13 billion. Billion right. Again, our state more. B, with a B, folks. And I was like, okay, so in eight years... Can you tell me what, what we've changed? Two billion, is two painful. billion dollars can, worth of, um, you know, stuff. Do you feel like you're getting two no, billion I'm dollars sure worth of services? I, I would be very curious to know what part of that two billion all went to pensions. Um, <laughs> it's just reality. There's a reason, folks. Public pensions, like GE just announced that they're freezing their pensions. So I'm not sure exactly what that means for the people who have pensions for GE, but like they're having to freeze their pensions. And there's a reason for this. Pensions well, don't work. They're not. They're not mathematically balanced. They, they, you know, there was something to be said about pensions when people retired at 65 and died at 72. <laughs> now people are retiring and living to be 90. And we want people and to I live do. a long time. But that is not, that is you, awesome. That is you, the world right. becoming richer, more but prosperous, we didn't and adjust. all of that. We never but, adjusted a, a, a policy De- that should have probably been done away with. 30 years ago. I mean, I told you about the guy I met down in South Carolina who, who um, he's a neighbor of my father's. Right. And he was a fireman in New York State yeah. uh, for 17 years. Yeah. And then he was slightly injured in something, yeah. which is why he didn't reach the full 20 years. But so he worked for 17 years. Yep. And he's been drawing a pension for 47 right. years. That's insane. And it's like, the yeah. math it don't make sense it doesn't folks. make sense in it when we talk about pensions and god forbid you suggest some sort of reform it's the unions that fu- oh. push back not because they're because they know that the pension system they have now is not self-funded and they, are, and they are dependent on the money they're paying out this year they need next year's employees to pay for and the next year after that and the next year after that it because it's not solvent. But, but look at um so so mayor craig joyce craig is just uh i saw she got endorsed in today's newspaper shocking. by of course shocking you know the, the both the police manchester police unions um and that we're gonna get 10 more police officers i i'm not really sure why because quite frankly crime is down no one wants to talk about it people you know are mentioning well, the bail that, reform right, and the, i was gonna say you know the I homeless think that, problem, but that isn't actually crime. Right, crime I is think, down. And so 10 new cops is $1 million right. to the city. So right. when you hear, oh, 10 new officers sounds great. and crime's yeah, really. down, right. I mean, maybe it sounds well, you know, good, I, but that's $100,000 per of, officer. I get a lot of pushback when I say I don't really think crime is up. But then I think, well, maybe we just live in the better part of the city. But I do. I no, do. I'm looking at right. Chief Capano's own statistics. I, I, and when it suits them, then I can find an article yeah. from two months ago that says crime is down because at that time the mayor mm. wanted to make an argument that, that crime is down. Now it's two months later. Crime hasn't actually right. changed. But now we want a different narrative because we want new police officers. So now suddenly, you know, we, we have a problem and we need these new officers. Right. I would like to see if we're going to spend this money. Yeah. Can we spend them on social services? Right. Can we spend them on people who can help the and homeless and hand- the mentally and ill? And I think you mean what, by social that. services, you're not saying just more money handed out to people. It's I'd rather spend a million dollars on some sort of treatment on ten system. people who can actually go to these homeless people yeah. and get them the help. They that need. they need. I agree. The police are not going to provide no. the help these people need because hurting people who are already hurt and not in a good place yep. 
doesn't solve the problem. All you're doing is you're doubling down. And I know we've said this before on this show, but it's like you can't you can't hurt people into into being better. Being better. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna beat you till you're better, damn it. Um Yeah. So on that note, because <laughs> what you, are the other questions? No, no I'm gonna so go back to the last book. question. Yeah. So the sports book. So I would vote yes on that because I I'm not anti casino. I'm not anti I um the only I mean I do believe if I the minute the briefly that I Googled it, I think the law in New Hampshire is does only maybe allow for ten of these facilities. So, so, and Nashua either has applied for one or wants one because they want a high end. We're not talking about like ski v off track betting from New York. We're talking people want to build high end profitable oh, this is, businesses. Uh, this is uh, you know uh, my my senator opponent Lou D'Alessandro. Of course, this has been his like baby for the past what twenty yeah. years, right? So he uh, he he was involved, I guess, in gambling as as a know. youth, according a youth. to his uh, <laughs> to his own memoir, which I had the. Uh, pleasure of reading <laughs> and um you know so he grew up sort of on the on the race tracks down with the greyhounds and the you know that okay. kind of stuff so i i think that's his background right so he's been pushing all the years for for legalized gambling which i'm not opposed to right. what i am opposed to is monopoly Monopolies. legalized yeah. gambling which means you know, someone, uh, a senator, say, would be like, hey, here are my 10 best friends, and we should give them all licenses, but we won't allow everyone else to do it because we don't really want to create a market where everyone competes equally. We just want to give special privileges to my buddies. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, you know, I have an issue with it when it's set up that yeah, way. I agree. The, the way I would like to see it done is with free, every solution, open. free markets, you know, the Republican platform, free people, free markets, free yep. enterprise. It's not complicated, folks. We can just be like, if you're going to let someone do it, let everyone do it and let the best people rise to the top and give us the best services they can. And we all win. <laughs> She knows what to talk about. I do. Um, okay. <laughs> so you brought up Joyce Craig. So I'm going to bring up more Joyce Craig. Um, last week, I saw a press release or a Facebook post or whatever. Joyce Craig announces the name list of 50 Republicans that have endorsed her. And, you know, there were some people who were like, well, these can't be real Republicans. Well, you know, they really are. Some of them weren't from Manchester. Oh, you checked? I checked, but I spot checked. Um, I didn't recognize any I recognize, like, two names, to be honest. One is uh, Nick Vallis, who doesn't live in Manchester. Um, and Tom Boucher, who I don't think lives in Manchester. You're like, they were just, it was kind of random. Um, but, I, okay, 50 Republicans who endorsed Joyce, Joyce Craig. But then my, my reaction was... Why? Who cares? Why does the mayor of Manchester, because we you live... You should see how many Democrats like me. Right. Ha -ha. Well, <laughs> never mind. It's like, we have nonpartisan elections in Manchester. You should be mayor of all the people and want to uh, get support from all the people, whether they're registered Republicans, registered Democrats, registered undeclared. I don't care. So the, it... It seems like, well, Joyce's campaign are fixated on, ha, 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 we've got these Republicans. I don't ever hear Re Victoria picking out people based on their party, you know, their, their, how they're registered. So that kind of set me off. Then there was this whole post about these paintings or drawings at City Hall. You know how when you go into the city clerk's office, they always have like art displays on the wall? Mm -hmm. Well, apparently there are drawings and paintings of Joyce Craig. What? And they, they're not just, and they're p drawings of supporters wearing Joyce Craig for mayor buttons and stuff. Completely inappropriate. I cannot imagine how the mayor of our city would possibly tolerate or allow or turn a blind eye to having their picture weeks before the election outside of the entrance of where people are going to register to vote and to cast absentee ballots. I mean, are you talking about a corridor with like paintings with like the, the, the great yes. leader, yeah, or, you know, up what? on the walls? I, kind of, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so that really that rubbed that, me that's the wrong a little, way. Like, stolen. So that <laughs> is, it was great. very communist feeling. Yeah, that's weird. So uh, that happened, and then you got the list of, we've got these 50 Republicans. And then today I read that Governor Sununu came down, and granted, this is all show. Come on, everybody knows how these big check opportunities go <laughs> um and he presented a check for you know 20 million odd dollars that the state is re returning not giving returning to manchester because 
whenever, like Governor Sunu said, whenever there's excess money, when you have extra money, it isn't the state's money, it's your money, and it belongs to the cities and towns. So yeah, they had a big press conference, you know, picture saying, and they invited everybody. I mean, Pat Long was there. He's a Democrat. He's on the on the school board, and mm-hmm. he's a state rep. So apparently, he knew. Um, you know, uh, what's his name? Lavasser was there. Hirschman was there. Um, Art B- Audrey, who's a Democrat, was there. Um, Education Commissioner Frank Edelblum was there. The new school superintendent was there. You know, like it was a big deal. Yay for Manchester schools. No sign of Joyce Craig. And I thought, well, now that's weird. Are you that petty that you can't stand in a picture with Chris Sununu? Because that's what it seems like. Because why wouldn't the mayor of Manchester, in the middle of a campaign cycle, take the opportunity, if she cares so much about Republicans supporting her, to say, look at me working with the Republican governor of our state. Well, and also, you know, when, when we get into the partisan stuff and everyone who's been watching this a while knows, like, I, I, that's not really the way I like to roll. You know, I think well, we just need to look I, right. at good ideas. And it's like, well, this seemed like it was a win for the city. Right. So if so you have a win the head for the, of the city, city, you should. I mean, I can't tell you, you know, how many times Ted Gatz has had to go to events that maybe he wouldn't, maybe he didn't want to stand next to Maggie Hassan a lot of times. But you know what? He was the mayor of Manchester, and that's part of your job. So um, her office pushed back and said, you know, oh, we were never told, we weren't invited. Well, that's silly. A member of your school board knew. He's the, he's the uh, head of the delegation, if I'm not con- uh, mistaken, from Manchester. He's the liaison to the mayor's right. office. I'm sorry if, you're, if your own people failed to tell you, but look, that was just really petty. Um, yeah, that bugs me. But um, and then what? And then back the to this. Third we're gonna question. The third question. So I don't know if the sports book one is relevant, is um, binding or not. It doesn't say. Okay, it feels so like. So then we're... I would assume it's binding, but I don't know. Uh, question three. This non-binding question. So this is just your feelings. Is submitted to the voters by the board of mayor and aldermen. Okay. Are you in favor of a student? from each high school having a seat on the school committee as a non-voting member? I vote no. Huh, interesting. Well, first of all, okay, I'm, I mean, I'm gonna take the Jordan Peterson approach. Okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna go over well with everybody. It's not that I don't care what kids think, but I care about input from adults in the community who are paying taxes, working for a living you know there's a i remember being a student but it could also if this is non-binding right and it's and they would have a seat on the committee as a non-voting why, member why so then they, it's kind of like but, but then what the are point? they right. right well that's what i mean part of me is like if you have if you i have a seat but you're not a voting member i'm i don't think there's any restriction that um prohibits high Them school from students coming, from participating right? now and if our of course, school- then you would have to know when the meetings are taking place. Right. And I was so just many are say, now non-public now if, and, and secret in the back rooms. You know, the concern is that either they don't know when the meetings are, or they're not allowed to participate. Then there's the problem, maybe with the school committee in general, because I have heard not maybe recently. I'm not going to put dates on it, where people have gone to public participate. Like the aldermen have very specific public participation guidelines, right. and they always listen to people. I'm not sure if we always have that same type of um, discussion at the school committee meetings. So, you know, maybe the school committee should reach out to students more. Maybe they could have a subcommittee that involves I mean, students, I but I don't know. Being a, a interesting learning experience. I mean, I think one of the challenges that we face today, especially with younger people, right, is that no one's teaching them economics. So like there's this sense, right? You know, you see it all the time, right? People are like, we want free stuff or we yep. want the world to be green. And I'm like, we all want these things, folks. It's just, you have to actually trade things right, right. off. You have to go, well, I if I want this, I might not be able to have that exactly like you would in a in household life. budget, right? Like there's not this magic thing that happens when the government is doing stuff. I mean, they, they do magically print money, <laughs> but that's a conversation for another day. But in terms of maybe educating the yep. kiddos to, to understand that, hey, if you want X, Y, and Z for your school or whatever, that means, you know, we Have might to, need to, less of this or more, you know. And, and I agree with that. But then I'm going to go, and here's my spidey sense again. 
Um, yeah, I'm, uh, my Spidey there sense. There is there are um, rules that the school committee, in particular, and I'm sure the board of mayor and aldermen. I mean, we're going to put can, can can taxpayers just serve on the board of mayor and aldermen in non non non-voting voting capacity? I would um, like to, <laughs> but. Um, we had problems recently in the last couple of years where um, non-public information was disseminated to the public by a school committee member, and there was a big to-do about it. I'm not sure that um, our current charter would say that these same these school committee members who are students are bound by those same um, those same provisions, those same ethics guidelines. I'm not saying that the right. kids would do it nefariously, no, and, and honestly, but I do think that there would be. I do believe that there are people on the school committee who would use those cracks in the rules to their advantage. And next I, thing I you know, honestly, is I think it's less the cracks in the rules, and I actually think the bigger challenge is is this trend towards using children for as, your messaging. Yes. So it becomes this propaganda tool. Because I mean, we see it was like oh, um, that Greta girl, that Greta girl, right? With the uh, you know, I mean, in some ways, I. I feel I mean, terrible for her. Somebody's taking it's, advantage it's of her. It's almost borderline child abuse, yep. in my opinion, right? If you're taking someone who, who maybe can't discern all the facts for themselves and just leaning into how to terrify them yep. and then, you know, shoving them in front of camera. So, you know, I don't know what the back door is there. I don't but know either, I, but I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm no going to vote no. no. So one I would vote three. me personally. I'll vote yes on one, yes on two, no on three. And then, of course, the elections, uh, November 5th. November 5th, Tuesday. Remember, remember, the 5th, 5th of November. November. It's a great um, way to remember yeah, it. Yeah, so um, it's good. now's the time for you to find out who you're voting for. Look, um, Take some time to look into who's running. Um, the sample ballots are all available on um, the city clerk's website. You can go to manchesternh.gov forward slash city clerk. And if you click on elections, it'll say sample ballots. It'll tell you where you have to vote. Um, you can register to vote at City Hall now up to a certain point. You can register to vote at the polling location on election day. You just have to bring some ID with you and proof that you actually live there, like your your lease or your mortgage or something like that, elect, a utility bill. Oh. Um, but take the time to do a little research so that you're not just voting based on name. Hey, I know that name. And I'm running for a school commission. Yeah, well, I think so. maybe next week, maybe we should just talk about that whole process because I don't think anybody realizes um, what the school charter commission will or won't do who's yeah. running what's involved maybe we could even um reach out and see if we could get somebody else who's running to join us that and, would be um, cool you know yeah. maybe one or two people we have a whole whole little list. i mean i think there are like 14 positions there are right? um 13 or something i don't know i think there's a lot I don't know. there's a lot and, and i think there are like 39 people registered right. it, it's and... interesting so i mean it's something i just like to have people be informed before they go in the voting booth and it honest quite honestly if you go in the voting booth and you don't know who you're voting for um, you, you one could spoil your ballot and go out and ask, but two, but you know, ask, there's always people at the polls. Um, oh, there's libertyballot.org. Yep. That's a great that resource a that'll tell you, you know, if you're, if, if your driving force is yep. sort of constitutionality, sticking to the rules, all yep. of us knowing what, st yep. you know, what I the mean, game I, plan I, is. I look at it this way. Like I know, I know there was, um, Planned Parenthood was out, um, door knocking and campaigning for Joyce Craig. How does that work? I know we don't have time for today, but I don't I'm know. Like, but isn't I'm that a conflict of interest? I don't know. Don't they get money? They do. Yeah. yeah. Weird. Weird. Anyways, <laughs> that's all we got for today. You can email us at manchtalk at gmail.com. Don't forget that we have the farmer's market on Thursdays um, out in front of the Doubletree Hilton um, Center in New Hampshire. Um, there's a gun show coming up, I think, on the 18th at the, the same hotel. Um, if you have any suggestions, if you want information about any of these questions, you want us to talk about something between now and the election, please do email us, manchtalk at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Facebook. And thank you for everybody who's tuned in on our Facebook Live. I think we're finally getting the knack of this. Um, that's all I got. Thanks, guys. Bye. Peace.